So okay guys, today I'm going to be teaching you how to easily modify and flash over your own custom ROMs to a GBA repo card using nothing more than a DS. Correction, a DS Lite was an R4 card. Of course your DS will need to be modified using an R4 and be capable of running homebrew. If you guys don't know how to do this, be sure to check out my previous video on how I modified my DS using an R4 Gold Pro. But besides that, the only thing we're going to need is, well, a GBA repo card. We can easily find these things all over AliExpress or eBay. Heck, you can even find them in thrift stores if you have a keen eye and keep an eye out for them. One quick and surefire way to tell if it's a repo is to see if the listing even states that it is a reproduction card. Another way to tell is to see if it uses tri-ring screws or Phillips screws. If it's using a Phillips screw and the text on it is not uh, indebted, indented but beveled, that will most likely indicate that the card is indeed a repo. However, if you're not sure, you can always check it out using the detect function within this homebrew application. However, I'll cover that here in a bit. The first thing we're going to need for this to all work is to well download the homebrew. So head on over to gbatemp.net and download GBABF 1.2. But if you want to stay up to date, I believe the owner of this project also has a GitHub page. Although their GitHub seems to be pretty out of date. They're running an older build here under releases, so I recommend downloading the GBABF version for now from gbatemp.net. But as always, in case links go down, I'll have my own archival version in the description if you wish to download that instead, and to follow along directly with the same applications I'll be using in today's video. But with that said, just click download, it will show up in a zip file, and all you really gotta do is drop it and drag it into your DS's R4 cards SD card directly into the homebrew folder. As you can see, I've already did this, so I'm going to just eject my SD card and put it in the R4 now. Now once your R4 is plugged back into your DS, all you got to do is navigate into the game settings and your new NDS homebrew package should show up. It should say gbabf.nds. So all you need to do is just click on that, make sure it works, it should open up and look something like this. Now from here, if the homebrew application opened up successfully, you're pretty much good to go. But before we can go and flash over a custom ROM to our GBA repo card, we first have to customize the ROM to suit our card. Now when I say to suit our card, there are many different reproduction cards out there that are available. Some reproduction cards come with RTC and some come with a battery for saving. Others, however, do not. The specific repo card I got, I'll have a picture on screen, doesn't come with neither as far as I'm aware. However, it's not the end of the world with these specific types of repo cards, we can actually remodify it and add a battery back to it just by cutting a simple trace and or just soldering a new battery in there to keep the SRAM powered. However, we're not going to be doing any of that today. We're going to be modifying our game card in such a way that it should work without a battery, just like the game that comes prepackaged on most of these repo cards. However, there is a bit of a process that needs to be done in order for us to do this. The first process that we need to do is open up an app called GBATA. I'll try to leave a link for this down in, this, in the description as well, but I can't quite remember where I downloaded my specific version, so that might be a bit before you get a link. However, as always, I'll link my files down below in the description too in a zipped up archive, so you can just download and use the same tools that I'm using in today's video if you wish. Anyway, we're going to open up GBA ATA, and don't worry, before I release this zip package as an archive, I'm going to remove my games from it. I can't obviously package this up with my own games, that would go against YouTube's terms of service and various other things, so you will have to use your own games and ROMs if you want to follow along with today's video. But with that said, once we opened this up, the tool should look something like this. All we need to do is click the three dots here and load in our ROM. So I'm going to load in Legend of Zelda and Link to the Past just by double clicking it. And from here, this program will give us all kinds of information and bug fixes that we can apply to our ROM. In this specific sense, since we don't have a battery, we want to make sure that this is SRAM compatible. So we want to head on over to the SRAM patcher. And as you can see, my specific game is not patched. 
If your game is patched, this option won't be available, so what we need to do is hit patch. But before I do that, I want to talk about some other options and things we can easily add on to our games as well. But keep in mind, the moment we add more patches and more little ROM hacks and things, the more unstable the game could get. So some games may not like it, so some games may prefer not to have many patches, if any, at all. But with that said, we can easily add reboot and sleep options as well as hotkeys. So if you want to put your Game Boy asleep by hitting a specific key set, you can easily do that. I think that is a pretty cool feature. I have not messed around with it myself, but being able to put a game to sleep actually sounds pretty freaking cool. Another thing we can do is fix the clock if the game has an RTC enabled uh, ROM for instance. I believe this tool here patches that out as well. But I'm not going to be messing with any of that, we're just going to be messing with the SRAM patcher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on patch after I select a new location. I think that will do, I'll just call this patched link and hit patch. As you can see it doesn't take very long at all in order to patch our games. However, we are not done. What we need to do now is put this patched game into an application called GBA Auto Battery List. But before we do so, make sure that you saved the patched ROM with the correct name. Always have it end with a .GBA. I just realized mine didn't have that. But yeah, anyway, all we need to do now is, on Linux anyway for me, on Windows it would be with the... Uh, with, you would use command line on Windows, my bad, I had a brain fart there, but on Linux I'm going to use the terminal. So all I need to do is just type in wine gba underscore auto, then the, the game name pretty much. In my case it's just called patched link dot gba, and then when I hit enter, this should patch the game to, well, not use a battery. Now keep in mind not all games can be patched pretty successfully. There are some games that will have freezes and various stutters and things as the game saves. In my case with Yu-Gi-Oh! it saves on the main menu. However, whenever you hop menus it will automatically save again, but in-game it doesn't freeze or do any of that at all. So like I said, depending on your game, this process can go smooth, or the game may just have issues and you will have to wait for other patches to come out for the GBA Auto Batteryless Patcher. My bad guys, I forgot, you gotta hit either 0 or 1. In most cases, you want to hit 0 for Auto. Sorry for all the extra strenuous errors that Wine is giving me, but this is what it pretty much wants us to do. You'll get this same prompt on Windows if you're using the command line as well. So basically, I'm just gonna hit 0 and then hit enter. As you can see that is it, the game is patched. I do wish it would exit out of the prompt, it doesn't do it automatically, but that is it. As soon as you see the patch successful, all you can do is hit control C to exit out of that, and close your terminal. From here, this patched link underscore auto is my patched game. I'm gonna load this back up onto my R4's SD card, it doesn't really need to go any into any specific folder, However, if you put it in a folder called ROMs, I believe that will open up automatically at the start. On my specific card, I got a folder called GBA, and in that folder I got a folder called ROMs. I sort my stuff out into various folders because I like to experiment when it comes to these fake cards. However, you don't need to do this. I'm just going to drop my ROM in a folder called Patched, or Batteryless Patched. That way I already know that it works. Just gonna copy and paste it in there. However, like I said, you can paste it anywhere on your R4's SD card. As long as it's on the SD card and you have room, you're pretty much good to go. And speaking of room, make sure your SD card has plenty of space because when we make a backup to back up our game before writing a new game on, that process does take some small amount of space. And since we can't just back up the saves, we gotta back up the whole ROM. That means every time you wanna swap games and not lose your saves, you're gonna need to back up basically the whole game every time. But anyway, now that the game is on my SD card, let me safely eject it, and we will go and put that back in our R4. Now I'm gonna take out the dummy GBA card in my DS and put in my repo card. If you're wondering, I took the part, the Pokemon Emerald cartridge, and put my repo card in my own 3D printed shell.
just to distinguish it from a real card. That way no one gets confused when they buy it why there isn't Pokemon Emerald on it. But with that said, now that I got the game in, my R4 is in, all we need to do now is just navigate on over to the GBA BF application. Now from here, I always recommend hitting Detect Flash first, just to make sure your card is a fake. It will most likely tell you if it is here and whether or not the application can handle it. Now once you've verified that the GBA card is a fake or a reproduction, I would recommend dumping the data first, just in case there is a difference in the ROM that you could maybe use to distinguish something maybe going wrong with your particular game, and it's always nice to have a backup on hand of the original game. So I recommend dumping the data, it may take some time depending on how large the game is, and since I already know what game's on here now, it's Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Tournament 2004, this will take a fair bit of time since that's a fairly large game, but I'm going to back it up just for the sake of posterity. And I also just don't want to lose my save games. So every time you swap games, keep in mind your save game is stored on the ROM, so you'll have to dump the whole game, that way you don't lose your save games. Anyway, you'll get presented with some options, just hit A to confirm. And select the, thir the 32 megabyte option, just select the biggest option available. So do that, hit A, and there we go. I'm going to try to zoom in on this. As you can see, it is now saving the blocks and backing up our ROM to a file called ymct2004.bin. If I had to guess, that's the name of the header that I used when converting this ROM over. So I recommend making sure your game has a valid name. That way when you back up your games, you can tell what game is what. But yeah guys, that is it. Once that is done, all you gotta do is just hit Flash ROM up at the top. Then navigate to where our game is at. In my case, I put it in a folder called ROMs, then in a folder called Batteryless Patch. And if I remember, I called it Patched Link. All I gotta do is just click A on that hit auto detect and that should be that the game is now flashing over and this is a fairly large game but not as large as my Yu-Gi-Oh game so this shouldn't take too long at all you'll notice the first thing it does is it wipes the card out then it burns the game on but if you're wondering after this process is done this card will work in a real uh, Game Boy Advance so yes, it will work on real hardware, so if you have any GBA homebrew, movies, TV shows that you have converted to a .GBA format, those indeed will work. I will be covering how to convert video to a .GBA ROM format in a future video, because it takes some work and effort on Linux to get those old applications up and running. And as of right now, I haven't figured out how to get that to work. But when it comes to all the other tools, Everything indeed works just right out of box, right through Wine. But yeah guys, when the ROM is done flashing on over to the GBA repo card, you should be spit back out into the main menu of GBA BF. It should look something like this. From here, we can actually go down to the very bottom and test our ROM. It will say launch slot 2 game. So I'm going to select that and hit launch. If everything has been successful, our game should indeed work. It's very hard to see on camera right now, but there it is. There's our game. Let me turn this on down. I'll quickly play this just for a couple seconds, and we'll check back and see if our game is indeed saved. Alright, I quickly played it just for a couple seconds, and I went back into it, and indeed my game did save. As you can see, the save game is present. I turned off and on my DS, and it just works. To prove that my save game is actually on this card, however, I'm going to take it out and put it in real hardware, so I'll be right back. Also, if you want this 3D printed uh, GBA repo shell, I'll try to link it down below. However, I may not link my specific model, I'll link the one I based it off of, because all these repo cards are pretty different, so you may need to tweak it and edit it to suit your specific card's motherboard design. It took me a few attempts to get this just to work with mine. As you see, the card fits in and works great. But yeah, there we go. There's our game on real hardware working just fine. Let's see if our saves are there. And yes, they are indeed there. 
However, there are some flaws with doing things this way. Some games, like I said, may have compatibility issues. Some may have some slight stuttering and freezes whenever the game hits a saving point. In my particular case with Yu-Gi-Oh, I'll try to have some B-roll of that. Every time you hop menus, you, the game will indeed just save automatically. Which, by default, this is how it normally works, but with the specific patches, you kind of notice it. However, once you're in game, like I said, things are just fine. So depending on your game, things will be hit and miss, so you may have to just experiment and play around a bit, and if your particular game just doesn't work, you'll have to take apart your card and battery mod it, basically, and it ain't too hard to do that. You just solder a battery right to the SRAM chip, and you can pretty much flash over any game, and it works just like real hardware at that point. But yeah, I'll link down below in the description where I picked up my specific GBA repo card, and I'll link all the software as well. So if you guys replicate this, let me know how it turns out for you, and if you need any help, just comment down below and I'll help you out to the best of my abilities. But for now, I think I'm going to leave today's video off here. DTPK signing off. Peace. And move that zip file onto the root of my micro SD card. Now, it doesn't look like I'm going to get anywhere anytime soon with my current corruption, so I'm probably going to leave today's video off here.